I'm going to go over a few semiconductor stocks that a trader pointed out to me. Murat is interested in ASML, SMH, AVGO, and NVIDIA. As for ASML, he says it's a great company. There's a lot of upside potential with this company. Right now, they're down roughly 12%. The RSI is below 30 on the four hour time frame. And he made this comment on the 17th. I got busy, so I did not get a chance to take a look at it until today. So let's break it down for you. This is where we are at 924.15, down 0.85%. To the north side takes us to two standard deviations and a level of resistance and a potential take profit area as well at 946.94. Above that, 973.82. And at four standard deviations, $1,000. This gap will close to the upside at 1066. Now we are at VWAP to the south side, one level of support, 89204. If we hit this line, I will anticipate a bounce at support as well as down here, which would get you a better entry at 837.20. 809.55 and at negative four standard deviations, 781.71. I do not anticipate we get to this level or this level in one day, which would be Friday. But if we do, you can expect people will take their profits and they will run and they will lock in and leave. But the one year price target on this stock is 11.62, which represents a 25% return from where we are. Let me show you what happened looking left. You can see right here, we hit resistance and flushed to the south side. And that ha south side happened to coincide with good earnings. And you would think that a stock would run off of good earnings, but as you often know, it does the opposite. And it flushes you out. People are taking their profits and the stock gets hosed basically. So we reported 6.825 billion. The estimate was 6.532 billion. So tanking off of good news, which means a better buy-in if you have not gotten in and this is on your watch list. But let me show you what we look like on the daily. Oh, but one other thing I've marked out this line and this line. This is what the RSI looks like on the monthly time frame. So the lowest we've gotten on the monthly is at 32 and the highest is at 93. So I just wanted to point that out. Now let's go to the daily. It's been a while since I have tracked this. So on the daily, here are your price targets. Okay, we are right here to the north side takes us to resistance and that is 1006 as i pointed out and then above that in the big picture that will take us to roughly 1179 the one year price target is right here of course it's going to take a while to get there and this thing will whip you around trying to get up here this gap to the upside at 1010 10 has already touched. It's hard to see with VWAP in the way there. And I think, yeah, right there. Right, and then we have another gap to the south side that is still in play, a landmine to the south side to be aware of at 871.03. And what's going on with this one? It's been a while, as I mentioned, since I've looked at this. So we touched on the daily right here at 974.96. Okay, and then we flushed down and hit support and then bounced back up. So I will delete that. That is no longer in play. And what else is going on? Oh, we've got another gap here to the downside. But on the daily, we are in an upward channel. So moving farther away from these gaps for right now. 
Okay, that will take us down to 778, lining up with four standard deviations, negative four, I should say. And then we've got this little baby as well to watch out for, and that will take us to roughly 60798. Fingers crossed we don't get that low, but if we do, that might be a great buying opportunity. And yeah, there's nothing else I'm tracking. Let's just go to the monthly and see. Yeah, I, this is not one that I have been keeping track of. See, this is the RSI that I've marked out for myself. So we've never gone beyond this, and then we started to crack. But anytime we get above 70, 70 and above, you can expect a pullback. I just use RSI's support and resistance and anticipate the moves. And look what happened on the monthly flush to the south side. Now let's move to the next ticker. And that is going to be SMH. Option R to reset so I can see what's going on. So we ended the day at 255.54, up 0.52%. We are at resistance, and you know what happens at resistance. We could eke up just a little bit more and then continue to go south after selling off. We are in a downward channel on the five minute. We have not reversed course yet. Now, your targets, 259.38, 269.50, 269.50, 262.35, and this gap takes us to 273.58. VWAP in the blue is 254.30, middle of the trend and the baseline, 249.86, 249.86, 249.86, 249.86, 249.86, 240.25 and 237.09. Highly unlikely we'll get there in one day, but we are moving downward. And here's a clear resistance area and boom, sell off. And that was, I'll, sh I'll show you that in the uh, daily. Well, let's just move it over right now. Yeah. I was thinking, was that on earnings or some sort of um, bad news? But I'd have to dig for that, and I'm not going to do that because this video is getting long and I have many stocks to go over, many tickers. All right. RSI is turning up on this semiconductor stock. And let me actually, let's just stay on the daily because I do know I have tracked this one in the past. And when I go from different time frames, the chart gets wonky now. So ignore all this stuff that I've marked out in the past. But apparently, I looked at it on June 22nd at 208.50. What else is going on? Let me, oh, while I'm here, let me give you the price target on the daily. Of this. I don't know what the heck that is. I've got to clean up this chart. All right, we are right here to the north side at two standard deviations, takes us to 281.99 and middle of the trend. And notice the wick touched it and then bounced off of it. And that will take us back down to 250.05 and the lower channel 218.02. Oh, and we have a gap here and here that are still in play and that will take us to I like to make make my gaps to the south side I like to turn it red that way I know just at a quick glance that those are landmines to the south side Okay, I think that's it. All right, the next one I want to go over is AVGO. 
My neighbor traded this one a long time ago. All right, we ended the day at 160.52, up nearly 3%. We are at resistance, and you know what happens there. We'll probably head back to VWAP. Could flush up just a little bit more and then fall down, or maybe even tickle this gap. But the next target area will be 162.31, and then all kinds of movement within this gap acting as resistance and then on the way down acting as support. So that's 169.03 to the upside. And VWAP is at 158, lining up with two standard deviations, the middle of the trend and the baseline where all price goes through. If it's trying to go to the south side or if it's on the south side, from the south side moving up to the north side. 153.58, 149.07, 146.79, and 144.62. And what is going on with this big gap? This gap has been in play since around the 12th, and it is still in play, still a threat to our accounts to the south side, taking us down all the way to 149.98. And yeah, that, that is, is a possibility within this week. I like to keep my expectations low and know that price will stay within negative two and two standard deviations typically, and we're on the outside of that, an outlier, so that's why I anticipate it to fall back down, and we are going down on the five minute and the one-year price target is 194.13. That represents a roughly 20% return from where we are. And on the daily, this is, I was tracking this before the stock split. And if you can believe it, <laughs> look at this. I tracked this at 17.29. And all sorts of levels here. Wouldn't that be nice to get back into the 600 range from where we are? Sweet. All right, now the next one I want to go over is, oops, stay on page, option R. Let's do NVIDIA. This is a very popular semiconductor ticker. And according to Fidelity, it again is the most actively traded ticker across all markets today at volume 320 million shares traded. So what is going on with Nvidia? Today we're at 121.09, up more than two and a half percent. We are at resistance. I've got to clean up the chart here too, and I'll explain what that is all about. 123 at another level of resistance, and 125.08 back to the middle of the trend takes us to 119.63. VWAP there, excuse me, and then the middle of the trend is 116.81, and then 112.67. 110.58 and 108.48. Now these are gaps to the south side that I've been talking about for quite some time. I'll show you that in the bigger picture as well, but these are all the gaps and I'm gonna clean this up right now. I have no idea when these gaps are going to touch. All I do is I see them, I notate them, and I extend them out. And when they touch, then I clean up the chart. So this one I mentioned will take us down to 118. 70 and that touched right here on Wednesday. So that is no longer a threat to our account or accounts in my case to the south side. All right. And let's 
take a look at the next gap. All right, this next gap is taking us down to 116.49. And again, I extended it out. So that touched to the south side. Did that really touch or was that a fake outbreak? Oh, you know what? No, I'm not gonna give it as a win to the south side. So I'm gonna keep that one in play. That is still a threat to our account, but we're up here. And if we reverse down, then it'll touch because look, it looks like it touched, but it didn't when you make that larger. No, still a threat. At 116.49, let me just delete that one. Clean it up a little bit. It's already touched at 117.47. I'm waiting for it to get down to here, roughly. All right, and then the next one after that will take us to 109.98, 106.48, this one at 101.62, and then roughly 94.95. I don't know if that will get that low, but you never know. Now, let's show you what this looks like on the daily. Okay, let me clean this up. As you can see, I've tracked this many times. This was part of my gap and go trades. For four weeks, I tracked that. Oh, look, oh wait, did I call out this one? No, there's no way we're gonna get down to here. This would take us to 3091, but that is still in play. But we are going in an upward channel on the daily, moving farther away from this. And look, we've got Earnings coming up on the 28th of August. Okay, where are we? Where are we? 120.109. I really should not be moving between the different time frames because this is going to make my chart wonky and then I'll have to fix it later. But this is where we are. To the north side takes us to 133.32. And to the south side takes us to roughly 109.51. Let me just make that bigger to make it more clear. It's kind of looks like a hot mess there. Okay, we are here. And yeah, so 109.89, that will close out this gap to the south side. We really need to just rip off the Band-Aid, close out all these gaps so we can let it ride. But otherwise, this is going to whip us all around until we get to this level. Let me just mark this out right here. Actually, I have to turn off the magnet because the chart gets wonky. There. Okay, so that's the daily. And let me flip back to the five minute. See how that, that moved the price label that I made? Look at this. It just... It's so terrible. I hate what TradingView has done to this chart. Going between the different time frames on the linear is horrible now. Okay, so now I have to move this back over here. Where are we? What the heck? 121. Right here. Let me fix that. Under coordinates, 121.09. All right, I'm done. All right, so that's a look at ASML, SMH, AVGO, and NVIDIA. I own none of them, but I'm sure since I'm heavily, heavily into Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, that that is in that fund, so I'm covered, so I feel good about that. Uh, I am in Intel, Baidu, TSM, and MU, and as you know, those other tickers besides Intel have tanked because Trump came out and said some things about Taiwan and sent the stock into a tailspin there, and that's not so good, but Intel did, did well. Here's AVGO on the list of the top tickers that I'm looking at. And then at the bottom of the list for today is Eli Lilly, which I'll look at at some other point. But I also want to say thank you so much for subscribing and taking a look at the charts. Hopefully you've learned some things and I know I've learned a lot 
tracking other people's tickers and I really enjoy doing that. And I finally crossed over the 500 mark for subscribers. I'm sure some people will unsubscribe after this, but it's just nice to see. And one day I would like to go live if I can figure out how to do it. I'm so horrible. I'm so busy. I haven't figured out how to do that. And maybe I could go live for 30 minutes out of the day, maybe during the power hour at lunchtime and then give you some tickers and some price targets. That would be fun. So if you guys do know how to go live on YouTube without having to download all these add-ons or subscribe to things, I don't want to do that. I want to make it nice and simple. Let me know. And if there's a ticker that you would like me to go over, please let me know as well. Thank you so much and have a great trading day. Thank you, Marat.